Morning, everyone. Um, yeah, I'm Jason from Make Architects. I'm, I'm an architect, and I'm, I'm really proud to, to be here and just talk to you about our story, which is a 15-year-old story. Um, so I'm going to tell you why um, from the beginning, really, and just I want to really think about how it's impacted our culture and the design process, which is... Um, you know, it's, it's, it's an ongoing question for us, really, but also how employee ownership is going to drive our future and how um, it's going to impact um, make as we, as we go forward. So I'm going to just tell you who we are before I tell you how it all came to be. So, you know, we are an incredibly ambitious group of people. We make no bones about um, what you see up there. That's, that's what we get up for every day, um, and that's what's driving us. Um, we, we draw, but we also build, so um, there are around 160 of us and we're, we're, you know, we've completed 84 projects globally, so we, yeah, we're, we're doing it, we're, at, we're out there. We've got an amazing studio space um, in central London, so this is our entrance. We're actually in a converted NCP car park, which is um, you know, down, down the ramp and into the, into the basement. Um, and you know, we've got an amazing group of people, and some of whom are over here. Um, and you can, you know, you can chat to them through through the day. Hopefully later on. Um, our geographic spread. So we've grown from London, you know, through Hong Kong um, and Sydney. So we, yeah, we're in lots of different places with our with our various projects. Um, we do big things um, and small things. Um, but at the heart is is really design, and that's that's our that's our absolute passion, and that's what's driving us forward. Um, but it but it wasn't always that way. Um, so in the beginning, um, there's, there's our original maker, so we're, we'll call him Ken. Um, and yeah, and it, it didn't take um, Ken long to really think about um, how we were going to go forward. So yeah, I love this phrase, you know, the star architect, and we, we hear a lot about it now. And I guess our, our sort of education as architects and our careers are, you know, there, there's a landscape of these great, great icons. And this is, this is Le Corbusier, founder of the modern movement. And I think there was a sense that um, everything behind these guys wasn't really being acknowledged. The influencers, the collaborators, um, you know, it's not just the, the, the very pinnacle of, of, um, of these pyramids. So I think, you know, given our backgrounds, we, you know, Ken felt that, um, that, that there may be a different way, that we could, we could acknowledge um, contributions and skills. And, and value value people in, in a completely different way. So I think at the time, you know, we'd all we'd all been into John Lewis. We had a, a sense that something was going on at John Lewis. Somebody had mentioned IKEA. Everybody was a partner. Um, so I think um, you know Ken knew it couldn't be a one-man band. He was going to need some some uh, mates to help him along the way. Um, and you know this whole thing around the band and um, getting together and and the lead singer. Um, you know that that didn't that didn't. That didn't feel right either. So, you know, we needed to to find a different way, and um, uh, and as we sort of grew, um, this whole mentality needed to be needed to be shifted. So, I think somewhere along the way there was a, there was a light bulb moment that it, it could be it could be just us. It didn't have to be them and us, me and everybody else. Um, so we 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 kind of quickly realised that, and we had the great advantage of a blank sheet of paper. So in some ways. Ken um, didn't have much to give away at the time. <laughs> um, we didn't have any work. Um, the bank account was, was, was zero. Um, but, but in a way, he was giving away a lot because he was giving away um, kind of the future of the practice. And he was giving it over to people that were going to join that he didn't even really know um, at the time. So it, it, was a, it was a great sort of vision that he had. And we, we could write our own rules. Um, there was none, none of this sort of transition. Um, and we could kind of make it up as we went along, which is pretty pretty much what we've done. So this is the pyramid. You know, this is this is the star architect at the very top, um, and we wanted to invert and think about things in a different way. And that's impacted how we think about leadership, how we support, uh, how we promote, um, and it also meant that we wanted to take away any any kind of hierarchy. So you know, what would happen as we were going to grow in it in in, in a way that was going to be almost like bottom-up. So if you imagine Ken is a, a sort of foundation, um, 
We needed a home, so I really want to thank Arup, um, another uh, great employee ownership, uh, another great employee owned company, and they, they gave us a home. And Arup haven't always been in glitzy he headquarters building. Uh, they, they, they accommodated us really kindly uh, on floor. We, you know, we built models in their stairwell. We drove them absolutely nuts. Um, and, and this is the beginning of make, so you'll notice something here. Everybody looks pretty much the same, apart from Ken wore the wrong shirt on that day. but. You know, we're, we're, we're all saying more or less the same things. Um, we're all from similar backgrounds. And, you know, if we were going to carry on, though, it was, gonna get, it was all going to get a bit boring. Um, and our buildings were going to be, you know, maybe the outcomes were not going to be what we'd hoped. So I think, you know, we realized that we couldn't find this idea of a maker and then replicate him or her. Um, we needed different frames of reference. We needed to be challenged. Um, so in a way, we started to realize that we needed people that kind of maybe weren't the archetypal maker, and that we, we quickly kind of brought people from, from different backgrounds together, and, and that's the beginning of Make. So it didn't really stop there. Um, a couple of years ago, we moved into our studio, and the, and the Make culture is so important to how we design, how we relate to each other, um, and the studio is pretty fundamental to that. So we're all working... At benches, um, you know, there's a huge amount of, of dialogue um, and there's, there's a massive amount of transparency. We're bringing people together from different spheres. So you can see um, technology, graphics, we've got animators, we've got model makers, we've got amazing IT, comms. And I think that internal piece is, and that internal communication is, is so crucial. And I think once you have that, you've got something you can get out and, and shout about. So, we're quite outward looking too. So we have um, a completely separate group which we, um, which, we, which we look after, which thinks about some of the big social issues. And we're doing a piece on urban loneliness at the moment, which will be um, a publication. And that will bring in speakers, it will bring in thinkers from outside of the practice. Um, so that whole um, inside out um, story is really important to us. We do loads of stuff around the office, and you know, just looking back, up, you almost forget what we do. We, this is what we call our annual, so it's almost uh, like a family photo album, but at the same time, it's a key piece of kind of client communication. It's the story of our year, so we've got 15 of these things to date. Um, we seem to have developed a whole range of kind of make merchandise, so we all go around in, in sort of make t-shirts and carry make bags. Um, we're publishing uh, our pieces around thought leadership. Um, so I think we're, we're, you know, we, we think outside of our own studio too, and we talk about these things. Um, and I think in some ways the kind of glue around the studio will be its humor, its gossip. You know, that, that group of 150 seems to be, I don't know, somehow about right for us. Um, and we've kind of arrived at that almost by accident. Um, we still value uh, drawing, and you know when we communicate, we're, we're drawing, um, you know, rather than, and, and drawing is brilliant because it takes away that whole kind of dominant uh, subordinate um, um, hierarchy that you have. A, a good drawing is a good drawing. Um, so we want to celebrate all of these uh, these great drawings that we're doing, and we, we sponsor a drawing prize. Um, you know, these are just shots around the studio. I mean, inevitably, we're, we we do do a lot of uh, we have a lot of fun. Uh, and we do do some work too, but you know, just just a few shots of some of the things that we that we do as a, as a group. So, yeah, there's a there's a fantastic vibe around the, around the studio, and that's part uh, very much part of our of our culture. Um, you know, these are uh, these are just some of the the stuff that we that we get up to. Um, and I, I just think it's interesting to think about um, the, the design process. And you know, when you take away that, that hierarchy, um, what we're really looking for is, is this idea that you know, the best idea is going to win on any, any given project. So we started with, with a single project, and that project turned into to multiple projects. And those projects, more or less, in the same sort of sphere. We've since expanded our portfolio, so we've got a whole number of projects. And I think you know, employee ownership and just taking away that hierarchy for us means that the feedback between projects, you know, we're not competing against each other, we're, we're supporting each other. And those little red blobs, you know, that overlap between projects is, is so important to, to driving our, our design. And in the three studios, again, that, that overlap, that geographic overlap, 
Um, we spend a lot of time um, with the studios. What we learn from Hong Kong will feed into Sydney. Uh, and that little red, red blob in the middle there is, is really where we, we want to be um, in terms of um, thinking about how we design buildings and how we go forward and how we, how we relate to each other. So the more of these interactions, the more of these crossovers, um, you know, we think that's going to make for better buildings and it's going to be a more fun place to work. So I just wanted to very, very briefly take you through a, a, a sort of journey on a, on a design process, just to get a sense of how, how we work and how employee ownership is supporting that, that system. So, you know, the very beginning, these are the sorts of drawings we, we can exchange. And, and again, without the I take away that idea of, of, of hierarchy and top down and allow people to draw, um, to express themselves, that goes through you know, some of our visualizers who are, are also fantastic designers. And then when we go out into factories and onto site, you know, we're open, we're listening. And I think that, that whole ethos translates outside, outside the studio really well too, uh, into some quite um, tough environments. So you know, we're, into, we're on building sites. Um, we're, we're out of our comfort zone in, in some cases. Um, and that leads us to you know, what we think are, are fantastic outcomes. And I think because we're, we're designing workplaces for others, um, you know, we're, we're, we're thinking about um, transparency, we're thinking about pride in, in work. Um, you know, and this is one of the buildings we've, we've designed for, for Hiscox in York, um, which for us really embeds a lot of what we, we say and what we do in terms of our own culture, um, you know, making fabulous workplaces that, that people are proud to be, uh, proud to be in, and, and people bring their families into this building, which is, which is always a, a, great, a great sign. Um, so I think in terms of employee ownership and our, our future, you know, there, there are challenges. It's, it's, it's not a, a paradise uh, at make, it's pretty good. Um, but over time, I think our, our colleagues and our makers you know, you, you like to think that there, there's a progression. Um, you know, you're going to be rewarded. Um, your status is going to improve as you gain experience and, and you go through the practice. But I think in, in some ways what we've done is we, we've actually taken away the, the ladder. Um, so there, there really are no badges. There are no, there are no kind of rungs to, to, to help you in that, in that journey through your career, which, which is quite, it's quite difficult in some ways. Um, so. What when we take away the ladder, I think what we're asking um, our colleagues and, and what I'm asking myself is, is something different. It's much more to do with what can I learn, how can I support those around me, um, and how can I contribute to, to the greater good. And I think instead of the, the kind of usual recognition, um, you know, we do loads of training, we want to give people, we want to empower people, um, and, and to do that, you know, there's this kind of continual um, sense of learning. So our practice is basically a learning uh, environment, and, and there's so much going on. Um, so, you know, there are different ways of, of moving forward through, through the career. And, and one of those ways is, is just, you know, we've set up these, these specialisms, and that allows people to gather together, pool their expertise around workplace, hotels, um, you know, we work in higher education, in residential. Um, so we're asking our guys really to plot their own path. So it, it's not necessarily going to be, you know, one direct route. Um, it's going to be, and you know, I've heard about this sort of climbing frame story rather than a ladder, but it, it's, it's much more to do with the yellow arrow. And, and you, you know, you make your own story and we will support you. And it's quite challenging because you know, you get this sense of, of vertigo. It's, it's almost um, not knowing exactly where to go. And, and it's, it's not easy, but it's, um, we think it's a much better, better way. Um, yeah, and, and that, that really influences how we think about leadership. So, you know, the, the guy in the, in the middle there, um, you know, he doesn't need or she doesn't need to be, um, you know, sp speaking first and, and loudest. You know, why not, why not listen um, to, the, to the team? And, and the, the best idea can come from any, anywhere in that, in that team. Um, so, so I think we think about leadership much more as an enabling and, and supporting role um, within, our, within our teams. Um, so yeah, it's not always been great. Um, you know, that, that would have been fantastic had we, we just gone, on, gone off on that, on that path. Um, you know, and, and I think 
there have been there have been bad um, bad times. It's not it's not always been been fabulous. And the idea around transparency, there's nothing really that people aren't aware of. We shout about where we are. Um, you know, everybody knows how the practice is doing. And there's that very kind of direct connection between you know what we do day to day and how it impacts the the greater. Uh, and, and the wider practice. So, yeah, I think through those times, you know, I think transparency has helped us hugely. Everybody knows what's coming. Everybody knows what's around the corner. Everybody can adjust um, and and get and make ready. And I think we're, you know, we're in a much better place than when we're ready to go again. So, you know, we've been through we've been through the ups and downs. Um, so, I I just wanted to ask. Yeah, our makers are here. I, I asked them, um, you know, what they what employee ownership meant to them. Uh, and it's really interesting what, what came back. So we've got um, Eleanor, who's, who's been around for seven years at Make. So she's talking about um, shared purpose, um, transparency, um, Jack, trust, uh, openness. And this, this was pretty off the cuff, so I didn't, didn't give anybody long to think about this. Helping colleagues um, for the benefit of the business. Taking control, um, fairness. Financially fair. Uh, Tom Tom's been around for a year. Um, opinions matter. Um, you do it because you want to. Um, part of the whole. Participation in everything. Pulling together um, towards a common goal. So I think it, it was surprising to me um, that kind of consistency around how people thought about employee ownership at Make. It was it was pretty 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 consistent, and I think you know we 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 celebrate um, we celebrate a lot, and and employee ownership is is one of the things that you know we keep coming back to. I think it's not something that just happens. Um, it needs to be reinvented within the practice. And as new guys come in, you know, you, we have to listen to those guys. What do they want from me? What do they want from employee ownership? And what do they want from the practice? And I think that sense of belonging, um, of purpose, of, of being useful, and, and that whole sense of, of the greater good is so, is so, so important to, to make uh, and, and employee ownership. Um, but yeah, I mean, feel free to talk to our guys because they, you know, everybody's got a slightly different perspective. But I think it's interesting to hear from from them. So um, yeah, that that's thank you very much. That's that's our story. <laughs>